hot is Egypt in here? Oh, this must be from one of those, uh, search for stuff games. I don't know. I wasn't really interested in any of them. As much as I like her interactive stuff. Uh, King Statue. Okay, that's kind of cool. Some Krollmeister stuff. scary thing. Because we're dealing with mummies. Okay. Hmm. Let's go talk outside away from Lily. Okay, no one's out here. Let's have a talk with Professor Hotchkiss about the four sons of Horus. She looks fabulous. Hotchkiss here. It's Nancy Drew. Oh, Mandy, as you call me. I'm so glad oh. you called. Nancy. I've been having the most infuriating problem with my internet. Uh, this is what? Nancy. Drew. Oh, you young people are so refreshing. Always in search of new identities. Uh... The problem <laughs> is that I downloaded I'll this program called Weather Monkey. At my what? age, it's important that I keep abreast of all meteorological developments. But now I'm starting mm. a new book, and I can't focus on my work because the Weather Monkey keeps yelling the weather at me. It's Maybe cloudy! You uninstall it? <laughs> I will do no such thing. That would be tantamount to murder. <sighs> Maybe Kill the monkey. turn it down? <laughs> Brilliant and fantastic. Oh, yes, Samantha, you are a ticket. I would love to help you, but uh, how do I know you again? Nancy, Drew, we've met a few times. Aha, yeah. uh -huh, now I remember you. If life were a good book, you'd be my favorite reoccurring character. Aww. I'm in Egypt, and I need your help. Egypt? Well, why didn't you say that instead of chattering away about my internet problems? I don't know how to respond to that. <laughs> I read your book, and I thought maybe you could help. You found my book while you were in Egypt. <gasps> the Serendipity is as delectable as Chateaubriand smothered in lavender lemon juice. I Ooh. am at your disposal. I didn't exactly find it. You sent it to me. You even signed it. Oh dear, I sign and send lots of things. <laughs> okay, uh, just let it go. Let it go. There's no fighting it. Have you heard of an expedition that went off in search of Nefertari years ago? Oh, yes. The team in which everyone died, is that the one? Yes. Do you um, think that story is true? Oh, heavens, yes. It's deadly out there in the desert. Think about it. You're going out there in search of dead bodies. There must be a reason they're in favor of the area. <laughs> but this expedition what wasn't it? searching for QB-66, right? Indeed. Had already been discovered. They were searching for Nefertari's mummy. What do you think happened to them? Oh, it's best you not concern yourself about that now, given your current location. They died off, one by one. They were eaten by the mummy. 
because they stole the ceremonial jars. <sighs> you really shouldn't steal people's organs. It's just rude. Have you heard of Abdullah? Yes, yes I have. He is December on my Men of Archaeology calendar. Well, you're kidding happy me. Happy Christmas. Does that exist? <laughs> it existed the second I made it. Is he there with you? Yes, he seems full of himself. He is. Oh, I am not an advocate of pulpy romance novels, but if I were, I'd call that an archibald trait. In chapter one, he'd swagger into the excavation site, the picture of a rascal with his dusty leather jacket and decidedly European haircut. <laughs> his cocky ne'er-do-well smirk displaying his perfectly white teeth, but by the end he'd be sweetly holding flowers and saying, Professor Hotchkiss, I'm dying to discuss your latest publication. <laughs> oh, a colleague of mine has guilted me into editing her latest romance novel, and I must confess I cannot wait until the project is completed. Reading page after page is absolutely wreaking havoc on my metaphors. Oh, no doubt. Anyway, what were we talking about? I no longer know. <laughs> Abdullah, that's what. He's a cold-blooded hotshot with only one setting. Success. Oh, sorry. I've also been helping my nephew break into the movie trailer business. Oh, Hotchkiss, why must you always burn the candle at both ends? Must you? He's a good archaeologist who knows Egypt inside and out. He could teach you a thing or two. Just don't pick up the attitude. Oh, uh, Nancy's pretty good at not picking up attitudes. She just picks up other people's stuff. What do you know about Nefertari? <gasps> ah, a love story. I'll break out the tissue papyrus because when I'm done, there won't be a dry Horus in the house. <laughs> uh, what? Look uh... it up, dear. Ramses II and Nefertari shared a love so vast, the world could scarcely contain it. I'm talking about the kind of love you spell capital L, capital O, heart instead of a V, capital E. They stood side by side and ruled the world, but as they saw the years stretch out before them, they were keenly aware that a handful of decades would never cut it. They needed to be together always. That's sweet. And relevant. Mm. The ancient Egyptians believed that life was little more than a dress rehearsal for eternity. I've found records that they concocted a plan to be together forever, side by side. Oh. Why not be buried side by side? They foresaw a volatile future for their kingdom, and they were correct. They knew they would have to enact safeguards. That's why in 1904, when QV-66, the so-called tomb of Nefertari, was found, her body was not there. What are the chances we found Nefertari's tomb? If I were a gambling Hotchkiss, I'd say... 60-40. I still don't get all this business with QV-66. Why build a fake tomb? For the same reason I never carry my passport in my purse when I travel. Some things are too valuable to leave in a tempting place. Mm. Indeed. You mentioned an expedition that found QV-66, Nefertari's tomb. It was one of the most significant finds in archaeology. They call it the Sistine Chapel of Egypt. It's where my fascination with the royalty of Egypt was born. The color alone took my breath away. We think of ancient Egypt as being a subdued sand color, but it was a riotous display with all the visual delights of a midsummer gelato shop cooler case. And you don't think Nefertari was entombed there? They only found kneecaps, which supposedly means that her tomb was robbed. You disagree? I do. What good is the mummy without the context? It's the placement in the tomb that makes the mummy valuable. I already know the answer to that question. See ya. See ya. Hotchkiss out. Well, I guess we couldn't find out the sons of Horus. Oh well. Let's see.